Hello and welcome to another Top 10 brought to you by Diagnostic 80s Reviews and the Full Force Podcast. I am Chris McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80, and coming up for your viewing pleasure is a list of the main Joes that I would love to see in the unbelievably cool and new G.I. Joe Classified series line. If you haven't already seen my Cobra Most Wanted for Cobra Convergence 5, then check it out on the channel after you've seen this one. I won't be counting any characters that we know are just around the corner, that list includes Flint, Lady J and Barbecue, all three of which would have made it onto my list easily. Before I get into it, let's quickly talk classified. This brand new Hasbro G.I. Joe 6 inch line has definitely been buzzing my berries thanks to the incredible updated designs, quality decos and insane articulation witnessed so far thanks to the early waves. What I plan to do here is simply list off 10 G.I. Joe characters that I desperately want to see updated and plopped into the 6 inch arena. Now my list is purely personal so I have no doubt that your lists will look completely different to mine and that is fine. I am looking at specific members of the team who 1 could translate well into the current design aesthetic, 2 haven't been officially or unofficially confirmed either by Hasbro or by leaked information, 3 have amazing accessories that would be mind blowing at the 6 inch scale and 4 I just plain like them and want them all for myself. Starting at 10 like any normal human being would, we have Repeater. Now even though we've seen a couple of big lads already using the same torso, arms and legs in Roblox and Gung Ho, I still think that tooling, or at least the legs, could see more use here with our friendly neighbourhood Steadicam Gunner. A new bigger body short sleeve shirt with new upper sleeved arms would be welcomed with a secondary vest to go over the torso. Worst case scenario, he could utilise Gung Ho's hat, or a brand new one could be done depending on tooling budget of course. Let's face it though, the accessories would be the winner here and by designing something more in line with the aliens Drake and Vasquez steady cam gun, they could get away with the more futuristic blaster angle they've been going with for the weapons. I could just imagine having a more articulated and elaborate steady cam arm and that is making me very excited indeed. I could also see Hasbro creating something new for the Nerf line that would utilise a steady cam setup and that really tickles my tackle. In terms of deco, they could really go to town on his digital camo or do something that updates that style but honestly I would be happy with either his original or Night Force colours for this figure. As an honourable mention at this stage, I would just like to throw in another digital camo alumni, Storm Shadow version 2. My reasoning is simple, he is already in the line as a character in his version 3 Ninja Force deco but I needed to explain why he didn't appear in this list and I would love to see him included at some point in the future repping his original G.I. Joe team switch. Number 9 now and this one will send shockwaves through the line, it's shockwave. Ok maybe shock blast depending on what Hasbro have to do legally with the name, either way the Joe's SWAT specialist would be a welcome addition to the classified lineup and with Beachhead already in stores there might be a possibility of reusing his balaclava head sculpt. I would expect a new cap for him but again worst case scenario that gung ho hat gets another use. He's yet another example of the digital camo family which I clearly have a fascination with obviously but man there's another fantastic opportunity for the creative team to run wild. In terms of accessories they could look at beefing up his urban SWAT gear but I could see them going in a more hostage response and rescue direction with a handheld battering ram, repelling gear for when he has to abseil from a roof into a window and other interesting accessories. Even something as mundane as a clipboard with a plan of attack scribble on it to show his team before they bust down the doors and windows in a building occupied by alley vipers and numerous hostages. I also feel as though he would be a great character to have in the line if we do ever get to see the classified alley viper which so far has only been seen as artwork on the reverse of the box and also Don's digital camo. Anyone seeing a theme so far? At 8 it's the Joe's undercover mother lover Chuckles. Simple really, that Hawaiian shirt on a 6 inch figure will be a thing of beauty and it gives the classified creative team at Hasbro a really interesting opportunity to throw in some awesome spy accessories that the original was sadly lacking. A briefcase, a manila envelope with removable top secret documents, a wire for undercover recording, a smartphone, shades, his trusty pistol and maybe even one of those old school leather police holsters concealed under his shirt. I just think you could have a lot of fun with this figure and based on the rumours that Chuckles will be a main character in the G.I. Joe ever vigilant movie following Snake Eyes, it could be a no brainer that we'll see him in the range at some point down the line. Number 7 and we've gone cold, it's Blizzard. 
He's just one of those figures I have such fond memories of, and once again it's the accessories that stand out here for me. All that wonderful Arctic gear and a great chance to finally give him an awesome helmet to complement that wonderful head sculpt. The original helmet looked a touch goofy, but I get what they were trying to achieve. The figure subscription service version really phoned it in using the same head that was also used for Sky Patrol Airborne and Scoop, and to rub it in even more wasn't even removable. So here we could finally see some headgear that might resemble the card art, as well as having the ability to be removed. The detail on his winter gear would also be able to pop, and I can imagine the textures and deco being out of this world. You would even have another possible sub-team member for Tiger Force to go along with Duke and Roadblock. Just saying, imagine that deco. Heaven. In terms of accessories, it's another avalanche of weapons with wrapping details, a backpack that could turn into a vehicle by attaching the skis, ski poles for a character who never had them originally, and lots of winter survival gear like a tent and stove in much the same fashion as Pursuit of Cobra Snow Job. Some of these accessories could see reuse with another character we will get to shortly on this list, but first… At 6, it's someone who would fit right into the classified line without that much of an upgrade in terms of design. Sci-Fi. Yes, the bright green version of Robocop who confidently wears the speciality Laser Trooper whilst being chill as f The thought of this guy as a 6 inch figure just blows my mind and I would be equally happy to see him in a similar bright green or even a more muted tone. I just think he rocks no matter the deco. The switch to more futuristic blasters has been met with some resistance in the community, but it really doesn't bother me in the slightest. I know, I know, well done McLeod, that's great for you and all but I want me guns. Well, in this case, they will be able to utilise Sci-Fi's awesome laser rifle and even have the hose to connect to his backpack. Again, the opportunities for a cool secondary, additional accessories like removable battery pack clips for his rifle that he can store on his person or on his backpack, and a removable helmet with a retractable visor are pretty exciting. Throw in a port on the backpack to clip his rifle to, much like the 30th anniversary figure, and you've got a laser guided winner for me. Not a lot of accessories needed here, but they can do a lot more with the few he would come with. As a side note, a high possibility for me where vehicles may be a pipe dream are the battle stations and battlefield accessory sets. I could easily see something at this scale to complement these 6 inch figures, and in certain cases getting a con exclusive 2 pack that would feature a rifle range with sci-fi and the next guy on my list. Would a G.I. Joe toy line be complete without this guy at number 5? Low Light. The Joe's Night Spotter, which really does sound very creepy indeed, was one of my favourite figures as a kid. I had the UK unofficial Slaughter's Marauders deco version and absolutely adored him. I was always very aware of that original US deco version thanks to the cartoon and the odd pack-in product leaflet when a cheeky import would make its way over. His design and file card helped to bring this mysterious character to life, and I will always hear Charlie Adler's voice when I look at that goggled, blonde beanie wearing Peeping Tom specialist. Showtime. When he appeared in the Pursuit of Cobra range I almost wet myself. Okay, yeah, I wet myself. He looked incredible and came with a plethora of fantastic accessories including the modular sniper rifle with case, all the little added extras and that tiny bullet which, as most if not all of you found out, was instantly lost as if Thanos himself had snapped his fat bedazzled hand glove fingers and the thing just turned to fragmented dust in the wind. My only issue with that figure was the fact you couldn't actually get him into a prone sniper position. In fact that figure struggled to do anything with that huge secondary, but fast forward to the worst year since the last plague and we have a very awesome opportunity to get a 6 inch version with a huge range of motion, exceptional accessories and details up the wazoo. He would be one hell of a classified edition and I think could be packed to the brim with even more cool stuff than we saw with his Pursuit of Cobra version. Hard to imagine, but just try. At number 4 and currently perfect for the hostile environment that has encompassed our lives over the last 5 months, it's airtight. I have such a close connection with this character, he was huge in the Action Force comics as Kurt Schnurr, born in Munich, West Germany. I was born in West Germany also due to my dad being in the Royal Air Force and I had his figure but tragically a friend of mine threw him up into the air in our infant school playground only for the bright yellow and green hostile environment trooper to never come down again. I was gutted and he was lodged in one of the gutters. Even though I asked the school's janitor if he could retrieve him for me, I was met with a I'll see what I can do, only to never see him again. I was distraught, but made up for it in later life by buying literally every airtight, loose or carded I've seen since. 
It means I have a strong connection to this particular character, and considering we got an absolute beauty of an update for the 30th Anniversary Renegades line, I can see no reason why he wouldn't make for a stunning inclusion in the G.I. Joe classified line as well. The details, the textures, the accessories, just imagine the possibilities. He can have a plethora of toxic or hazardous materials like barrels or canisters, a Geiger counter to test the radiation in the area of current hostility, and his HECR hazardous environment containment rifle or industrial vacuum gun as I like to call it. His helmet could be removable and attached via breathing apparatus into his back pack, which could store a number of those previously mentioned items including his hose attached rifle for good measure. The opportunities are huge for this guy, and I for one can't wait to have him standing next to his buddy and soon to be revealed in the classified range barbecue, well, if you're an Action Force comics fan. In at 3, and it's a real home run. A hit and home run actually. Yep, yeah, hit and run. Tell me he wouldn't be a great classified figure and I will slap you in the face and then run away. Seriously though, all that climbing gear, grappling hook and the bag, a bunch of cool nerf guns and the deco could be sensational. Of course I'm just thinking about Tiger Force redecos down the line but a UK man child from the 80s can dream right? But honestly, there's so much scope for a super cool update in 6 inch form for this guy and seeing how they approach Beachhead makes me so excited for what they could do with Hit and Run's glorious original design aesthetic. The camo, the climbing strap secondary and loads of scaled rope and they would have to include a big knife that could be attached to the bag. And I can always buy two and paint the other one blue and orange for lols. This guy has to be up there as one of my favourite characters of all time, and at number two for a classified once list, I imagine he will be somewhere on your lists as well. It's the Joe's rugged survivalist and fourth character on the list who could don their Tiger Force decos. Yes, I have a problem, and yes, it's Outback. The moment I clapped eyes on this figure was on a trip to Norwich with the folks in 1989. I remember being truly captivated by the card art, which told a story all on its own. Was Mr Selkirk stopping to rest or set up camp? removing his awesome pack, laying it on the ground whilst taking in the gorgeous mountainous scenery, or was he picking his gear up after a quick rest slash camp and looking at his objective for the most epic of days? We will never know, but I always assume the former, finding his perfect spot to settle down before the evening took over and all of Timber's mates turned up to nibble on his ankles. Either way, it's art of this nature that helped sell butt tons of toys back in the day, and I'm actually excited to see which artist gets the job for him and how they will improve or even develop what has come before. So far the artwork has been so striking and beautiful for each and every character and I love the idea of having all of these different and talented artists working on the figure packaging individually. It's a great additional extra for me and really adds value in what can be a rather wasteful and throwaway culture. I will be taking great care of these boxes even after I've removed the figures to get play deep in articulation and accessory boners. So Outback, how would he relate? Well for me, first and foremost, I would fully expect the designers to stay fairly faithful to that original design in much the same way as Beachhead in the Target exclusive range. At his core, the ginger hair and beard, headband, survival tee and camo pants should be the main signposts, but the opportunity for a glorious new head sculpt is very exciting to me. I could also see them adding a secondary for him, much like his 25th and up incarnations, with a possible repaint of the gung-ho vest we have already seen. If that is too large, however, as I don't see Outback as a great hulking like Roadblock and Gung Ho, the 50th version really screwed up in that department, and with Beachhead's vest being non-removable, then I think a brand new vest should be included. It just has to be open in the same way that Gung Ho's is, otherwise that beautiful white tee with survival written on it is rather redundant. There are numerous opportunities to really go to town in the accessory department as well. The backpack can be on the huge side and be able to lug around a sleeping bag or a tent and poles, or some cool survival necessities like the aforementioned stove and radio that we saw with Pursuit of Cobra Snowjob, and as I already mentioned when discussing Blizzard. You could stack the guy with all sorts of cool gear and even pack him in with a battle station or battlefield accessory set like the bivouac or forward observer unit. Either way, this one would be great and I look, hopefully, forward to a day when Outback joins the classified ranks and even more hopefully when they reveal they're doing him in his Tiger Force kitty shirt. Dreams can come true. I mean, if you know me at all, then this guy was obviously going to be at the peak of Mount Classified Most Wanted. Here come the Ot Stepper, it's Lightfoot. 
This absolute beast dropped in the US in 88, but my introduction to this mad as a box of frogs design was in 1990 and his G.I. Joe the Action Force release. I was instantly in love, yes he's bright yellow, yes he has a bright blue helmet with red lenses, yes he has green accessories and yes he comes with a bright orangey red robot drone. I mean none of that is a bad thing for me. He also got two lenticular additions, one on his robot and one on his backpack. Now imagine if you will that a classified version of this guy ever appears. Just think of the accessories alone and tell me you wouldn't cry with joy. Okay, okay, I know he's not everyone's cup of tea, but ever since cosplaying as the Night Force version, which takes the figure to a level other figures can only dream of, I have cemented my relationship with this character. The thought of getting him as a 6 inch figure just makes me weak at the knees. The upgrade would be mind blowing especially when you factor in aspects like improving on the robot drone, almost to R2-D2 levels, and having his mind detector fold up and housed securely on his backpack. Detailed sculpted mechanisms on the said backpack and drone that mimic the vintage lenticular stickers, a removable helmet with the antenna and red lenses, and a cool new head sculpt. Oh my I'm shaking. Not just that, but having used a Nerf Terror Scout for my own robot drone build, it's funny that they are utilising a number of Nerf designs for the weapons. In any case, I would love Lightfoot to be included in the range as the entire package would be super interesting. I could also see a great opportunity for a sub-series exclusive theme around him, Firefly and other EOD specialists like Tunnel Rat and Tripwire. Just imagine that set. You could even give Firefly a motorbike a la retaliation. Anyway, you get my point. Lightfoot number one, fight me. That's it then for my top 10 most wanted G.I. Joe classified figures. I will be back for more G.I. Joe related top 10s in the future, including some for possible themed classified sets which I have teased ever so slightly in these lists already. Thanks for watching and as always, full force. Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on Twitter at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page facebook.com forward slash The Full Force and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on either of those platforms with feedback or questions. We have also started a Patreon page so if you want to see your name up in lights on these videos or enjoy exclusive bonus content then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in full force gi joe fans welcome to cobra convergence 5 Cobra Convergence is the G.I. Joe fan community's month-long celebration of G.I. Joe's eternal enemy, Cobra. Please join as your favorite G.I. Joe podcasters, YouTubers, photographers, and cosplayers present new Cobra content for the entire month of August. G.I. Joe, the full force podcast, Half the battle, special mission force, comic tropes, Toy Poloi, Plastic Battles, Scorched Earth Creations. Every day in August, we'll spotlight a G.I. Joe fan creator with new Cobra-related content. That's a dose of Cobra every single day of the month. Talking Joe, a G.I. Joe podcast. Merry Mercenary Cosplay. Order of Battle podcast. Cobra Island. SEO Toy Review. MacDowell. Mate Milo. Fun School Roni. The full lineup of creators is now available at HTC788.com. Make sure you subscribe and follow each one so you don't miss anything. Joe Motion Videos 82, JLS Comics, What's on Joe Mind Podcast, The Human Mechanism Mark 2, Green Yeti 907, My Side of the Laundry Room, The File Card Podcast, Real Hector Canada. We want every G.I. Joe fan to get involved, support the fan community, and show us your creativity. You will find instructions at hcc788.com for how you can join the convergence with your own Cobra creations. Joe Fan 82, J Bot, codename New 2 Vero 2, Painted Plastic, Joe Colton Cosplay, Hooded Cobra Commander 788. It's time to turn the world blue. Cobra Blue. Go to hcc788.com right now and get ready for the convergence. Oh.